Today we're going to be looking at the Speedos in two different VW T25 or VW Vanigans. Um, both vans have Speedo faults, um, so we're going to be removing those, investigating the issue, uh, and hopefully by the end of this video we'll have them fixed. The speedo in this van is actually working fine. So we got that up and working by replacing the speedo cable last year. So if you want to find out how to replace speedo cable, I'll link to that video above. Uh, however, the odometer has never moved a digit. So it's never moved since I bought it. Uh, so that's what we're gonna be investigating in this van. And in this van, the speedo needle is bouncing. Now the most common reason for that is your speedo cable starting to break. And so as the fibers of the cable start to snap, it'll twist every time it goes round and that causes your needle to bounce up and down. But as it's bouncing in this van, it's making a clicking noise and that's coming from the clock. Uh, but we'll have an investigation and hopefully it's nothing permanent. The first thing we need to do is take the speedo out. Now to get this cover off, there's two finger holes in the back. Just grab hold of them, give them that pull, it'll pop off. If you have this plastic cover on, uh, undo the cap for your brake fluid reservoir. And that should release it. Nice and easy. So to disconnect the switches, the top ones, uh, the wires just pull off on both sides. This one needed a little persuasion with a screwdriver because my fingers are so cold I can't feel them. It's not nice today, it's pretty freezing. Now the wires are disconnected from the top switches, it's easy access to the screws. Careful not to drop them because they will have to do this one. Oh, just like I said. That's obviously why we've got a random screw up here because somebody's been here in the past and dropped the screw. Okay, the whole clock should now be free to move easily. Uh, if you want to remove the switches at the bottom, you can either prise the wires off the back, like a thumb, um, or you can actually squeeze the switches together themselves and remove the whole switch in one, uh, whichever is easiest. So all the switches have a little squeezy tabs on the side here, and so if you've got fat fingers like me, it's hard to get into the inside one that's on the inside edge, uh, so you might have to use a screwdriver. Uh, basically, apply a little bit of pressure to the switch with one hand, Press the one on the outside first, with your thumb which will make it release on one side and then you get your finger on the other side or a screwdriver and the other side will pop out and it should just come straight out dead easy. Next you have to disconnect the speedo cable which is the back of the clock here. Uh, this is a late style one which is this squeezy nylon type. Um, so you just squeeze it basically and it just pops straight off. And um, The early ones are like a bottle cap, they just screw on or a bit like a beetle I guess. Lastly underneath here i uh, got the, the big plug. And look at this wiring. Something's been chopped off here and something's been combined with something aftermarket, which is a little bit of a concern. It might also explain why not all my wiring's working properly, so I'll have to look into that. We've got a dangly one here. Not that is. This is the socket for the long plug we just removed. Um, if you have an earlier van, an air-cooled van, um, the plug will be to the side there, so it's slightly different to remove. And at this side where we'll be removing this piece of tape shortly, uh, on the air cooled version, again, it's very slightly different. So this next section is going to be super gentle because um, you don't want to damage this circuit board tape. So I'm just going to prise it off the little hook there, hopefully without making the hole too big. So it wants to go back on again. There we go. So we've unhooked the plastic circuit board from these two little hooks at the top. I'm going to leave this last one till very, very last because um, you can get easier access to it once it's um, actually out. Um, now, behind here is a little plug. Um, you could, in theory, pull it out, but I wouldn't risk pulling this off the actual plug or anything because it's all quite very delicate. So, I would unscrew the Speedo next. speedo should just pop out. If you get a little flat blade screwdriver you can just push the plug out from the inside so there's no, no tension on the plastic tape, you're not going to do any damage. It's all very very delicate. There we go. And then you should be able to easily get to the underside of the last little one. There we go. One speedo removed. To test the speedo, I had a spare speedo cable, so I've hooked it into a drill, which goes past my coffee on the workbench uh, into our speedo, so we can actually spin it 
uh, and find out what's happening. Uh, the other one, because that speedo cable will not work with this one, I'm pretty sure. Uh, we'll have to come up with some other kind of solution. Hopefully you can hear me above the noise. Um, this is the early speedo, which is now tooting along quite happily at 55 miles an hour. Uh, now the problem with this one was the odometer wasn't working, so the speedo's fine, but the numbers aren't changing. Um, if we look at the side, it's kind of tricky to see, but the cog there, look, is turning. I've got a little white dot on this spindle in the middle, and that's not. I just turned that noise off for a second. Now I'm not sure if you can see, there's actually a split in that cog, and that's, that's why this cog is now spinning freely around the spindle and it's not driving the numbers as it should do. Now what can actually happen with these is this cog tends to move away from the uh, from this plate, um, but that is very, very free and sloppy on there. So the only thing we can really do without a donor clock to take another cog from uh, is look at gluing that in place, I think. Just checking the mechanism, say so it turns pretty freely. Um, I don't think that's an issue. So at least that's not seized as such. For the glue, I'm using old fashioned Araldite. Um, if it works, I'll put a link below. Um, so old fashioned stuff, I guess it's been around for a long time now, but it's epoxy glue, mix two together, and it sets pretty hard. It's uh, quite quick to set, use a couple of hours uh, of full strength, and hopefully, um, it's good for bonding plastics and metal and it'll stick our cog in place. We shall see. I'm just going to put a very small amount on the shaft. When we put the cog back on, I don't want the glue to sp squeeze up to the end. And I should glue the cog to the, the metal plate at the back of it. So I'm going to put a very, very small amount on there. Should be quite a tight tolerance anyway. It'll be quite quick. I've only got about a five minute work time with this stuff. I'm gonna push it back up onto I'm gonna push it back up to the plate. But I'll try and get rid of any excess glue because I don't want it to stick on. Uh, but I'm not going to do it tight up, so get as close as I can without touching. So I'm just going to put a little blob around the top of the spindle and the black cog. Now I don't want to get it on the actual teeth itself because obviously I don't want it to interfere with how the cogs mesh together. Right, let's give that a couple of hours to set. I'm going to take it into the warmth in the house. Fingers crossed. Let's give it a whirl. Well, it was working for a second. <laughs> What's going on with that? On the, uh, the end wheel here, look, there's a little, uh, a couple of notches, or a little notch in the centre. So the wheel turns quite easily and freely. Uh, that's not a problem, but as it goes round, and it gets to the top, as soon as it meets the, uh, the cog at the top here, it jams solid. It will not move past that point. Uh, the top top cogs are free and the spindle is free, so what's causing that? I wouldn't know. And now we're having a really bad day, because I wasn't even touching it, and the needle just fell off. Great. Oof. Right. Well, fish is off. I found the problem. <laughs> so if you can see here, there's a blob of glue. There's one there. There's one there. There's one there. And what's happening is the clock's going round. It turns this next dial. And this next dial here, look, the glue is jamming on this cog. So it won't go around anymore.
So that won't go around, so it stops that one going around and it ends up smashing the little drive gear. That's where the glue was. Now this next bit may cause a little bit of inaccuracy in the clock. Uh, we'll have to see how it goes. Um, if you put the pin back in against the little peg, which is here, it's hard to see, uh, which is welded in place, I can't remove it, and you tend to find it won't return all the way back to, to zero. Um, so what I've actually done is I've turned the drill on at the slow speed I can make it turn, so it's just moving up a fraction, which hopefully will give a little bit of tension when it comes back down. So I'm going to carefully put the pin back on, the uh, needle back on. Maybe a bit too much, we'll have to see. No, I think it's a little bit too springy, but we'll have to see. That'll do for now. So we've now got our odometer working, our numbers are turning nicely. Hopefully, the five will jump next. Wait for it. Yeah, rock and roll. And that's where the glue was as well, so it's not catching anymore. If we look at the sides, cog's turning nicely there. Glue seems to be holding up. Really happy. There's one last thing I want to mention, which is the position of this black cog. Now it's possible I've set it a little bit too close to this um, plate and not quite central enough to the worm gear. Now uh, I'm pretty sure the last one I saw was offset, um, and this one was as it came off here, so I've kind of put it back as it came off. Um, so I believe it should be offset. Um, when I put this one central to the worm gear, um, it was a bit notchy, um, so it struggled to turn. But that could be because my cog is broken and it's expanded slightly. Um, I'm not entirely sure. So with a, an undamaged fracture one, you may get away with it being closer to the centre of the worm gear um, than mine is right now. Uh, I guess you can, you can test that just by looking and, and spinning it. Um, there's also, because there's a crack between two of the teeth, one of the gaps is slightly larger than it should be. As a consequence, um, when the numbers are going around, there's a very slight hesitation between one of the numbers. And it really is a small thing. You've got to be quite OCD to be worried about that. Um, but I think by closing that gap up between the two cogs just a fraction more, uh, would have helped taking that slight notch out of that, that smoothness of rotation once every time it goes around. Um, but it is working well. I'm happy with it. And hopefully, if you've got an earlier odometer issue, we may have helped you out today. This is the later Speedo. Uh, so the Speedo was working fine and the odometer was working all right on this one. Um, however, it was bouncing and it was making a clicking noise. Um, now, I thought it may be the clock um, rather than the actual cable. So usually it's the cable that causes that. Um, so we're going to quickly test it on the drill. Uh, to drive this, I've used a drill bit from a little screwdriver. Um, it's a 2.5 flat blade one, and it seems to locate in the back quite easily on a drill. Uh, let's give it a quick whirl. So it's not bouncing when connected to the drill. So uh, clearly the problem isn't the clock. So kind of good news, kind of bad news. Um, I'm glad it's not the speedo that seems to be at fault, which I suspected it could have been. So I think getting in there to, to fix anything would have been a bit of a nightmare, a bit of a, uh, a long one to do. Um, so clearly it's an issue with my cable. Now I told it had been replaced and it was new. It actually looks really new as well. Um, so either it's not been replaced um, or it's been fitted incorrectly or it's broken. Um, basically if you fit them a bit too tight, they go around a corner too tight or around an edge or something, um, they can actually cause the, the, the clock to jump as well as when they're snapping. So it's something we'll have to look into. Um, I have done a previous video on replacing speedo cables. Um, it was actually for the earlier van, but say the, the process is pretty much the same. Um, so I'll link to that above uh, if you want to, to see that. But we seem to have a decent clock that seems to be working all right now, so happy days. Uh, in terms of the odometer not working on a, on a later clock, um, the drive gear is at the side just the same as the early one. However, the cog is more directly in line with the worm gear. Um, so whereas on the early one it sits a bit offset, uh, on the later ones it's more central. But it's always worth checking for a second just to see um, if it's where it should be. Uh, and I guess to make sure that this spindle's not spinning independent to the cog as, as it was on the other one. Um, but yeah, put this back in, jobs are good in. Sort the cable out. Hope that helps guys. See you soon. Bye bye.